This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easiest way to build your website. Here's a question for you. How do the airlines that charge the least money make the most money? How on earth is that possible? What if I told you that Ryanair, the mother of the European ultra low cost market, is the most profitable airline in Europe, despite sometimes charging just a few cents for a one-way ticket? Back in 2015 when I was applying for universities, I had an interview at a certain university in the UK whose closest airport was Stansted. Upon checking the prices, I realized that not only could I afford to go, but I could afford to bring my mom as emotional support as well. The Ryanair ticket for the two-hour flight from Gothenburg, Sweden to London Stansted was nine euros per person round trip. That's less than the price of a one-way train ticket in most European cities. Between expensive fuel, staff, and airport costs, how can Ryanair possibly make money selling tickets at that price, let alone having the highest margins in Europe doing so? Here is why low-cost airlines make the most money. Now, we have to cover one thing first. All low-cost airlines aren't always the most profitable, and some legacy conglomerates like Lufthansa Group make significant amounts as well. However, there are a few low-cost airlines that are really making bank, and I think there's something fascinating about an airline charging 10, 30, or even 50 euros round trip on a majority of their flights being able to turn such a profit. So, we will break this video down into sections. Firstly, We'll discuss the costs of certain low-cost airlines, then we'll discuss the profits, and lastly, we'll go over how they can achieve such high operating margins. Back to my 9 euro ticket. The truth is that Ryanair lost money on us that day. There's no way they could turn a profit at 9 euros per person for 4 hours of flying. Looking at their costs from their financial statements, they're approximately 29 euros per passenger excluding fuel. These costs compare to 39 euros at their closest competitor Wizz Air, which still has remarkably low costs compared to low-cost airlines owned by full-service airlines like Lufthansa's Eurowings at 114 euros per passenger. Now, how do we calculate the cost of fuel to get an idea of their total costs? IATA aviation fuel prices in Europe were roughly $0.57 or 57 cents per kilo last week. Considering that a 737-800 burns as a very rough estimate around 2,500 kilos of fuel per hour of flight, a one-hour flight would cost around $1,450, and my two-hour flight from Gothenburg to London Stansted would cost just under $3,000 in fuel. If we divide that by the 189 seats on board to get a fuel cost per passenger, on a full flight, that cost is $15.30, or roughly 13 euros for a total per passenger cost of 29 plus 13, which is 42 euros per passenger. That's a 7 five euro loss on a single passenger. I don't see how they can be Europe's most profitable airline. Well, the truth is, I got lucky. The average Ryanair ticket does not cost four euros fifty one way. In fact, it costs ten times as much, approximately forty six euros one way. Even at that much higher price, with an average flight time of two hours, the profit is still only four euros per passenger. That's nothing, right? Listen to this. That operating margin is pretty much standard for full service airlines. The average European airline has an operating margin between 0 and 8% depending on the year. A 4 euro profit on a 46 euro ticket is actually higher than Europe's average operating margin at 8.7%. So yes, most airlines would make less than 4 euros in profit on this type of ticket. So the question now is how does Ryanair achieve such high operating margins? And how can their costs be so much lower than all their competitors? Well, let's move on to the profit side. 
The 8.7% margin in the example above clearly doesn't explain how Ryanair reaches its average mind-blowing operating margins of 15 to 25%. Well, let's pause for a second and think about how the flying experience has changed over the past two decades. All European airlines used to serve free food and drink, provide free checked bags, and offer free seat selection. As you're very much aware, Ryanair does not. They famously are not the most generous airline and can be credited for the lovely quote-unquote improvements to the flying experience at full-service airlines across Europe as well. They were the original airline to charge for anything and everything. I think you know what I'm talking about. 30 euros for a bag, 10 euros for seat selection, 10 euros for food, 5 euros for a drink, and they even charge 55 euros to check in at the airport. The hope, of course, is that each passenger will buy at least one or two of these things. Adding a bag and a meal results in 40 euros additional revenue with minimal additional cost. 40 euros extra on a 46 euro ticket is incredible. And in total, 20% of Ryanair's revenue comes from these ancillary fees. So it's no wonder the full service airlines in Europe have also started to unbundle and now charge for all these things as well. With that, let's go back to the cost because this is truly what sets Ryanair apart. If they pay 42 euros per passenger who flies with them, that means every additional euro is pretty much profit. The bag, the meal, all of it. But if we go to Lufthansa or even their low cost subsidiary Eurowings, their costs were 150 14 euros per passenger, so they'd still be losing a significant amount at this price, even if they sold a bag, a meal, all of it. The difference is that Ryanair doesn't need to make as much money as a typical legacy airline to turn a profit on each passenger. This comes down to the vastly different cost structure of Ryanair, which I will break down as follows, as I discuss how they can achieve such high margins. First staff, second hubs, third routes, and fourth fleet. Now there's bound to be some Americans in the non-stop nation saying, hold on, why isn't he giving any credit to the OG low-cost carrier Southwest? So, credit to Southwest because they are who inspired Ryanair. I'm not sure if we should say thank you or what. The irony is that in comparison to Ryanair, Southwest seems like a full service airline. Firstly, as you can see, Ryanair's highest cost along with airports and handling is staff. That's ironic to say the least because Ryanair does not have much staff of its own. In fact, Ryanair does not employ a single pilot. Let me explain. You know in the former US president, who will hereby be referred to as the Cheeto, was going on and on about US companies outsourcing to China. Yeah, you know. China, 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 you take China. Well, Ryanair are master outsourcers in their own right. If a pilot wants to work for them, Ryanair makes the pilot set up his own company, and then they hire him on a temporary basis as a contract employee. What does this mean for Ryanair? Well, for starters, they don't have to pay the same taxes they would for regular employees. They're also not responsible for paying any benefits, including sick pay, which is required by law in most EU countries. But since the pilot is employed in his own company and is a contractor for Ryanair, they can get out of this obligation. They have the same employment structure for many other employees. This means that their staff costs are significantly lower than other airlines. So why would any pilot choose to work at such an airline? Because Ryanair views it as them doing the pilots a service by giving them a way to accrue flying hours, even if the pilots end up making pretty much no money in the process. The idea is that down the line, the pilots will be able to work for an airline that treats them well thanks to the experience they gained at Ryanair. On to topic number two hubs. Ryanair, just like several other low-cost airlines, is registered in Ireland. The airline happens to genuinely be based there, but why is Ireland such an appealing place? Through a complicated history that we'll leave out of today's video, Ireland became a haven for airlines, offering favorable tax laws, write-offs, and accountancy rules. So it definitely benefits Ryanair to be based there, but this is not their only hub. They don't have one, two, or even three more hubs like most other airlines would, they have a staggering 82 aircraft hubs all around Europe. 
how does that make them more profitable than regular airlines? Their business model is operating non-stop flights. Even if you tried, it's impossible to buy connecting flights via their website. This also lowers operating costs since they don't need the airport infrastructure for connections, and they don't have to pay connecting airport fees. In addition, they avoid having to pay for crew hotels in all types of places since they'll usually have a crew base at each hub. What other opportunities does this type of setup enable? Well, it enables the most interesting thing to me when it comes to low-cost airlines. If you live in a smaller European city like I do, odds are your home airport is served by a higher number of low-cost airlines than legacy airlines. Or to put it another way, you might have a flight to Frankfurt on Lufthansa or a flight to Amsterdam on KLM, but Ryanair, EasyJet, or Wizz Air might fly to 5, 10, or even more destinations from your hometown, even if they don't have a hub there. Let's take the example of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Ryanair flies from Banja Luka in northwestern Bosnia to just a few cities, one of which is Gothenburg, Sweden. Admittedly, Gothenburg does have a decently sized Bosnian population, and this provides a base demand for the flights. The same applies to Tuzla, where Wizz Air has a strong presence of flights to Germany, Sweden, and elsewhere in Western Europe. But these airlines don't have to worry as much about the purchasing power on the route, the business demand, or the demand overall. They can enter a market with little to no demand and still succeed. Why? Their prices are so low that they create demand that didn't exist before they launched their flights. There's no way that hundreds of people were flying between Banja Luka and Gothenburg every week. But now, because of the direct flight on Ryanair, it's suddenly feasible. The reason is that people see the low fares and think, why the hell not? Let's go to Banja Luka and check it out. Can't be that bad, and at this price, there's no risk to going anyway. Despite their high number of seemingly random routes, Ryanair manages to achieve the highest load factors of any airline in Europe. In 2019, their annual load factor was 96%, compared to a European average of 80%. This is, again, because their prices are so low that people can't resist booking. So low-cost airlines create demand, which also means they can operate routes that legacy airlines would never dream of flying. This, in turn, gives them a lack of competition. And without competition, low-cost airlines thrive. They can still charge prices that are low enough to stimulate demand, but as more seats get sold, they can hike prices way up and ensure they capture almost every direct passenger that would have considered that route. This also explains why low-cost airlines generally do not fly the same routes as legacy carriers. These routes tend to have higher costs and operate out of more expensive airports. In London, for example, Ryanair has a massive network, but given the size of the city, flights to Stansted or Gatwick for London-bound passengers aren't really competing for all the same passengers as flights to Heathrow, unless for the most price-sensitive customers. Ryanair goes after the hardcore leisure travelers or a few business travelers heading north of Stansted, while British Airways captures much of the market for central London and leisure travelers staying on that side of the city. In markets where Ryanair does fly to primary airports like in Frankfurt, they're known for their ruthless bargaining. Given their size, they can get away with far lower rates because airports want their service, even though they're paying rock bottom prices. This was a massive controversy in Frankfurt because the airport agreed to offer Ryanair lower fees than those they offered Lufthansa, whose main base is there. This beef ended up being one of the reasons that Lufthansa shifted a significant amount of traffic to Munich, including several A380s. So now we know that Ryanair saves money through some interesting employment strategies by operating routes from a huge variety of hubs that lack competition and by creating demand through low pricing. So what about their fleet? Full service airlines usually operate a variety of aircraft, which allows them to adjust capacity to meet demand. Since they don't have much room to move in terms of price, they instead match the aircraft to the amount of demand that exists at their set price. Conversely, low-cost carriers will not adjust the aircraft, but will rather adjust the price since they have a much wider range of prices they can charge that will still result in profits. Ryanair, for example, historically operated just one aircraft type 
while Wizz Air or Southwest operate two aircraft types. If it's a popular route, they can sell the ticket at a high price, since they can't expand their capacity to meet the demand anyway. If the route is less popular, they can sell tickets at rock bottom prices and still fill their planes. Being able to operate such a wide network with just one or two aircraft types is incredibly valuable. Firstly, the airline can order the aircraft in bulk, sometimes hundreds at a time, resulting in massive discounts. Once the aircraft are in the fleet, they have minimal complexity, only needing to maintain one aircraft type, one type of seat, and one type of crew. The aircraft are also completely interchangeable, allowing them to substitute aircraft with minimal disruption to their flight schedules. So operating just a few aircraft types reduces costs in almost all areas and is a huge benefit. Benefit. Last but not least, we can talk about low-cost airlines without mentioning that there is another key to their success, or perhaps even a necessity to their success, their size. Ryanair is Europe's largest airline, with Wizz Air and EasyJet not far behind. This allows the airlines to achieve massive economies of scale, so that vegan lasagna you eat on Ryanair probably costs them just a few cents to make. The larger the network, the lower the relative cost of advertising, management, and more. With every aircraft Ryanair adds, their average costs go down. And that, my friends, is why low-cost airlines make the most money. Speaking of low costs and saving money, did you know that you can save 10% on your first purchase of a domain or website with today's video sponsor Squarespace? Then you'll get access to one of the best website building tools in the world, allowing you to choose from dozens of beautiful templates to create a visually striking yet effective website. Everything is simplified with Squarespace. Whether you want to launch an e-commerce store, which you can easily do directly in their building tool, create a blog with an advanced commenting system, or have all your posts automatically shared to social media. You can actually get started with a free trial to see just how simple building a Squarespace website is at squarespace.com. And then go to squarespace.com slash nonstopdan to save that money, honey. 